In America's early colonial history, one of the most monumental locations is Jamestown, Virginia. Founded in the year 1607, Jamestown was the first permanent English settlement in the New World. It was a fragile outpost, perched on the edge of an untamed continent. And yet, from this precarious foothold emerged the beginning of what would become the United States of America. But even as Jamestown laid the foundations of a new nation, it buried its own secrets deep, beneath layers of earth, and within the bones of the men who died there. Now, more than 400 years later using ancient DNA sequencing, researchers have not only identified two of Jamestown's earliest settlers buried beneath the floorboards of its long-lost church, they've also unearthed a hidden scandal from the shadows of England's aristocracy. In the dawn of the 17th century, England, under the rule of King James I, was eager to expand its influence and tap into the fabled riches of the New World. The Virginia Company of London, a joint stock company, was chartered in 1606 with the ambitious goals of establishing a colony in North America, finding gold or other valuable commodities, and discovering a westward passage to the Orient. In December 1606, three small ships, the Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery, set sail from London carrying 104 men and boys. After a grueling four-and-a-half-month voyage, they landed on a swampy peninsula on the banks of the James River in May 1607, naming their settlement Jamestown in honor of their king. The early years were a brutal struggle for survival. The colonists were ill-prepared for the harsh realities of this new land. They faced diseases like dysentery and typhoid, saltwater poisoning from their initial water sources, relentless attacks from the native Powhatan Confederacy, and internal strife. The legendary Captain John Smith, with his often abrasive but effective leadership, managed to impose some order and negotiate crucial trade with the Powhatan, but his departure in 1609 heralded an even darker period. The infamous starving time during the winter of 1609 to 1610 saw the colony pushed to the brink of collapse. Famine, disease, and relentless Powhatan sieges reduced the population from several hundred to a mere 60 desperate survivors. Just as the remaining colonists were preparing to abandon Jamestown in June 1610, a fleet arrived bearing supplies, new settlers, and a new governor, a man of noble standing and military experience, Thomas West, the third Baron de la War. His arrival is widely credited with saving the colony. He was not alone. He was accompanied or soon joined by several kinsmen, including three of his brothers, Francis, John, and Nathaniel, and other male relatives, all part of the English gentry looking to make their mark, or perhaps find refuge in this new, challenging world. Central to the life of any English settlement was the church. The Anglican faith was deeply interwoven with the colonists' identity and daily routines. The first church at Jamestown, a rudimentary structure, was built shortly after their arrival. By 1608, a more substantial wooden church had been erected within the triangular palisade of James Fort. This church, used until about 1616, became a place of worship, as well as the burial of the colony's most prominent figures, a tradition carried from England where burial within the church was common. It is within the archaeological footprint of this 1608 church that our story of discovery truly begins. The Jamestown Rediscovery Foundation is an archaeological project initiated in 1994 by Dr. William Kelso. In 2013 and 2014, during excavations within the chancel of the 1608 church site, archaeologists made a series of profound discoveries. They unearthed four aligned graves, their positioning clearly indicating the high social standing of the individuals interred within. These were not simple pit graves, but burials showing care and distinction. Two of these coffins, in particular, exhibited superior craftsmanship, further suggesting the importance of their occupants. One of these better-made coffins held an astonishing artifact, the fragile remains of a spangled military sash, its fabric interwoven with silver threads and sequins. Such an item was a clear marker of a military officer of high rank, a gentleman of status. Through a combination of these burial details, Skeletal analysis, providing age estimates, and careful cross-referencing with historical documents from Jamestown, letters, official records, and colonial accounts, researchers began to piece together the identities of these individuals. The man buried with the elaborate sash was hypothesized to be Captain William West. Colonial records indicated that a Captain William West, a kinsman of Governor Thomas West, had arrived in Jamestown in June 1610 aboard the same ship as the governor. Tragically, his time in the colony was short-lived, he was killed in a skirmish with Powhatan warriors in the fall of 1610 or early 1611, likely in his early 20s. His burial within the church chancel, alongside other colonial leaders, would have been fitting for a kinsman of the governor who died in service to the colony. The other individual in a well-constructed coffin was believed to be Sir Ferdinando Wenman. Wenman was another high-status figure connected to Governor West. In fact, he was the governor's first cousin. 
Lord de la War's mother, Lady Anne Knollis West, and Wenman's mother, also named Anne, Nay West, were sisters. Wenman had also arrived in 1610 and held the distinction of being the first English knight buried in America. Historical records indicate he died of illness in the summer or fall of 1610 at around the age of 34. The Jamestown records explicitly named both Wenman and Captain West as kin of the governor, but the precise nature of Captain William West's relationship to the governor beyond kinsman and his relationship to Wenman remained somewhat opaque in these initial historical accounts. The other two burials in the chancel were later identified as Reverend Robert Hunt, the colony's first Anglican minister who died in 1608, and Captain Gabriel Archer, an early leader and critic of John Smith, who died during the starving time. While the archaeological and historical evidence provided strong candidates for the identities of the individuals in the unmarked graves, the scientific team sought deeper confirmation and further insights. This led them to the cutting edge of forensic anthropology, ancient DNA analysis. Now, this is where modern science truly peeled back the curtain on a long-held secret. The geneticists didn't just confirm these were men of European descent, they looked at their DNA very closely. And they found something fascinating, specifically in a part of the DNA called mitochondrial DNA. Think of mitochondrial DNA like a special family signature that follows the mother's line. It's passed down almost unchanged from a mother to all her children, sons and daughters. And those daughters then pass it on to their children and so on, down the generations, but only through the female line. So if two people share a very specific pattern in their mitochondrial DNA, it's a strong sign that they share a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, or some other female ancestor relatively recently in their family tree on their mother's side. The test showed that Sir Ferdinando Wenman and Captain William West had this very same, very specific mitochondrial DNA signature. This meant they were related through their mother's side of the family. This finding was a surprise. This finding initially puzzled the researchers. Given that Captain William West carried the West surname and Sir Ferdinando Wenman's mother was a West, the assumption had been that their kinship would be traceable through the paternal West line. While cousins and nephews are related within a large family, their known relationship structure didn't immediately explain why they would share such a close, direct maternal line connection, according to their mitochondrial DNA. A cousin and a nephew might be related, but sharing the same maternal signature suggested a closer or different kind of maternal tie than the traditional family tree showed. This genetic puzzle prompted the historical researchers to go back to the documents with a new question. Could William West's mother have been someone else? Someone who would create this shared maternal link with Sir Ferdinando Wenman? They started looking for any obscure reference, any hint of an alternative possibility for William's parentage. And that's when they struck historical gold. Digging into records related to Captain William West's affairs after his death, they found documentation from a court case. Within these old papers was crucial testimony or a statement, perhaps from his aunt or someone connected to his will, strongly indicating that William was the son, not of Lord de la War's brother, but of Lord de la War's aunt. This aunt's name was Elizabeth West, and the critical, history-altering fact about Elizabeth West was that she never married. This meant that Captain William West, the man buried with such honor in the church chancel, the esteemed nephew of the governor, was, in reality, the illegitimate son of Elizabeth West. In the 17th century, particularly among aristocratic families, the birth of an illegitimate child was a significant scandal. While such children were often cared for within the family, their existence was frequently hidden from public records and official genealogies to protect the family's reputation and inheritance lines. This explains why Captain William West's true parentage was missing from the formal family history for centuries. He was acknowledged and supported by the family, given status and opportunity, but the circumstances of his birth were a closely guarded secret. So, the ancient DNA didn't just name the dead, it acted like a genetic key, unlocking a 400-year-old family secret that had been intentionally buried from history. This discovery is the first time ancient DNA has been used to uncover a case of illegitimacy in early colonial America, especially among the upper class. And it leaves us wondering, what other secrets does the soil still hold? What other mysteries, hidden for centuries, are waiting for us to uncover using these remarkable tools? The potential for more discoveries is immense, not just at Jamestown, but at historical sites all around the globe. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe to our channel for more stories where science meets history. Farewell, and keep exploring.